I have a favor to ask. Everyone who listens to these podcasts, I am asking that you would subscribe to the Gazette, our new digital magazine. It works on all devices and is guaranteed to give you hours of great entertainment. If you're listening to any of our podcasts, please go to oldtimeradiodvd.com and subscribe. Give it a few issues. If you don't like, simply unsubscribe. But I know that you're going to love the Gazette, oldtimeradiodvd.com to subscribe. You'll be glad you did. Earth Search, a ten-part adventure serial in time and space by James Follett. For his own greedy reasons, Emperor Thornton has joined Telson, Shana, Darv and Astra on the Challenger in their search for the planet Earth. All five have been put into suspended animation as the starship heads for the star cluster Tersus 9, watched over by the ship's two guardian angels. Earth Search Part 6, Across the Abyss. had sustained a weight loss of 1% during the last six months suspension. I have increased his carbohydrate input by one point. All organs functioning normally. Cerebral activity satisfactory. All hormone balances satisfactory considering the speed we have advanced into full sexual maturity. You are satisfied, number two? I am satisfied. Lower him into the biostatic tank. We can congratulate ourselves, number two. All five are in excellent condition. Are you ready to proceed with the activation of Shana? Ready, number one. Dalthon administered. Dosage level five. Shana will be at consciousness threshold three in five seconds. Shana, this is Angel 2. Can you hear me, Shana? Yes. Angel 2. Listen carefully to me, Shana. We are about to wake you. You and the others have been in suspended animation for nearly two years, and the Challenger is now halfway to the Tursus 9 star cluster. You're going to wake us. We are waking you, Shana, not the others. Dosage level seven. She will be at consciousness threshold two in five seconds. Listen carefully, Shana. When you wake up, you will discover that your body has changed and you will accept those changes as perfectly normal, which they are. I don't understand. I don't know what you... Let me speak to her. Shana, listen to me. Place your hands on your chest. That's right. Can you feel how you've changed, Shana? No! No! It's wrong! It's ugly! You're not ugly, Shana. You're now very beautiful. So very beautiful. And when you wake up, you will think of yourself as being perfectly normal. Do you understand? She's ready now to full consciousness in five seconds from now. Good day, Shana. Time to wake up. Oh, good day to you, Angel too. Hey, what's going on? Why am I the only one awake? We need you in the observatory, Shana. We are sorry we have had to wake you, but we considered it necessary. But why only me? Hmm? Have we reached the star cluster? Not yet. 
After your massage, a service android will bring you a meal in the observatory. We will explain there. Its bearing has remained consistent since we detected its presence 100 hours ago. Let's take a look at its spectrum. Hmm, reflected light. Was it absolute magnitude period? 190 seconds. It could be a regular body with irregular surface colouring or an irregular body. Whatever it is, it is rotating. Hmm. Range over a thousand million miles. We will be overhauling it in 30 hours at our present convergent rate. No for debris or asteroid? Possible, but unlikely. This region is relatively clear of matter. The particle sweeps have hardly replenished the reservoirs. We're okay for mass? Yes. So, well, what do we do about that thing? Angel One and I believe that it might be a ship. We have signaled it on all bands. We have allowed several four-hour time delay periods between each set of signals, but there has been no response. Just a minute. The observatory auxiliaries will confirm our findings regarding its size. About the same size as the Challenger, it seems. You were right to wake me, Angel, too. Thank you. We'll carry out another observation in 15 hours, hmm? And there should be a 50% a improvement in resolution by then. If it is another ship, she is certain to insist that we bring the others out of suspended animation. Therefore, if we are to move against Thornton, we must do it now. We will attribute his death to the fact that we did not know enough about his metabolism to sustain him in suspended animation. He is a newcomer. The others will accept our explanation. And what about the warrior robot he smuggled aboard? Fager need not worry us despite Thornton's threats. It is a crude device. How is it to know its master is not in a permanent state of suspended animation? We have lost track of that robot. We have now no idea where it is hiding. There are hundreds of disused galleries throughout the ship, and Fagor is obviously clever enough to know which ones are unmonitored. He is still operated by a comparatively simple program. Thorden trusted it to look after him while he was in a state of suspended animation. Because he had no option. In any case, no one would be foolish enough to build a warrior robot which can self-activate its weapons systems. So, we destroy Thorden. If we find the planet Earth, Thorden will want to conquer it. The Earth is a very beautiful and very large planet, but not large enough to accommodate Thorden's ambitions and ours. Image centered, Angel 2. It's in direct line of sight with the spiral galaxy in Ramades. Can you filter the aberration? I don't believe it. Angel 2, generate the image in the isolation field. I want a good look at it. The odds against such an encounter are in. I'm not interested. I want the others brought out of suspended animation, immediately. When you wake... You will awake. You will find that your body there will have changed. There changes in your physical And you will think you nothing more of it. It will seem you perfectly normal. You will not worry about normal. the changes that have taken place. Perfectly normal. You perfectly will not normal. worry. The changes had started Astra. before you slept, darling. Astra, you are now a beautiful young woman. Now they are changes complete. are complete. You will not you worry. You will not worry. You will think of yourself you and the others as being normal. 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 It's no use, Telson. We've got to get him into a resuscitation capsule. Call one of the surgery androids. Oh. Thornton's had cardiac stimulation, brain stimulation, everything. He's dead. There must be something There's we can... nothing we can do now. 
I'm sorry, Commander, but Darg is right. It is too late. So how did it happen, Major One? The suspended animation process involves declination of all organs and their functions until the human body is sustained virtually at the point of death. I don't want a lecture on suspended animation. I just want to know how Thornton died. Angel 2 and I have looked after you since you were born. We know every cell in your bodies and the exact needs of your bodies. Thornton was a newcomer. We had insufficient data. There was a time when all of us used to look upon our guardian angels as infallible. <sighs> We'd better go and see what it is that Chan has found. Image located. It's generated in the isolation field. A ship? Mm. Mm. And it's virtually identical to the Challenger. Shana, that must be a reciprocal image of us you're generating. It's not, I've checked. You can look at it direct through the optical telescope. There's, there's writing or, or something on the main hull. Can you increase the resolution, Shana? Right. Challenger 2. Wow. Oh. It's our sister ship. The, the Sentinel on the moon mentioned Challenger 2. Yes, but it told us that Challenger 2 returned to Earth. Maybe... Oh, no, no, it's too absurd. What? Well, look, our grandparents set off from Earth in this ship to search for an Earth-like planet, right? So? We now know a million years have passed on Earth. Enough time for Earth technology to take the entire planet out of the solar system. Yes, yes. So, what if during that time, Challenger 2 returned as planned, was refitted and sent out on another mission? And there it is now drifting derelict. So what happened to it? Probably the same thing that happened to us. Its guardian angels took over. Darb. Why do you think it's derelict, Shana? It hasn't answered our signals. And it looks as if it was struck by a meteoroid so large that its shields couldn't cope. You see the damage it's caused. No, that's not meteoroid damage. Hey? Uh, let's have a close-up of the damaged area. Oh, right. Darb's right. If you look at the damage, you can see that it's been caused by separate internal blasts. Thousands of them. Shana, you and I had better go to the main control room and find out how much time and fuel we'll need to match course and velocity with that thing. You're not thinking of boarding it, Commander. It may provide a clue as to the whereabouts of Earth. But if there was trouble aboard, and we Whatever don't... else we may discover inside that ship is immaterial. Dove. Mm. The water reservoir is my favorite place in the whole ship. Well, we've never explored the whole ship, so you don't know. Do you suppose that there's still hundreds of lakes all over the Earth? Mm, well, you've seen the holograms. But that was the Earth of a million years ago. If I ever have a baby, I shall want to watch him playing with you in a real lake, under a real sun. Not like this. Well, first, we have to discover how babies happen. <laughs> I think I know now. Oh, I wish you'd sit up when I'm talking to you. Uh, it, you think you know? Well, it's strange, but when we came out of suspended animation, I suddenly realized that I knew... Well, that I knew everything. Didn't you feel the same? All I want to know is why it is that you've forgotten about the Paradise recording. Because there's no such planet and there's no such recording. I'm telling you, Astra, there is. I saw it. Oh, you... I just saw a black android move behind those pipes on the other side of the reservoir. <laughs> black? You couldn't have. I'm telling you, I saw a huge black android, and it was moving without touching the ground. Look, Astra, none of the service androids are black. I know what I saw. It was fitted with a space drive unit and lasers. It was jet black, and it glared across at me just before it disappeared. Particle sweeps fully retracted and locked. Thank you, Dow. Angel 1, we're matched with Challenger 2. Separation, 1 decimal 2 miles. Can we risk jockeying closer? Well done, Commander. There is nothing to be gained by getting nearer. She has been in the wars. I'd say the wars have been in her. That maneuvering's cost us 25% of our propellant mass. Now, the question is, where do we enter her with the shuttle? There's an intact freight bay on the right. See it? Yes. And there are plenty of large holes big enough to edge the shuttle through. Oh, rather you than me. It won't be you. You and Astra and Shana will remain in the control room while I take a look inside. No, Telson. You're not going by yourself. 
I'm going with you. There's no point in risking two of us. There's no point in risking any of us. If you're going, then I'm going with you. And I don't want any argument. What are you smoking at, Dart? Me? Nothing, Commander. Angel 2. I have detected the warrior robot. Fagor. It has just passed through Bay 7. The doors to Bay 7 are locked. There is no airlock, and it is in a permanent state of vacuum since the great meteoroid strike. First it was in Bay 7, and then it was not. I doubt if Fagor concerns himself with doors if he wishes to move anywhere. He is a formidable sight, too, over ten feet high. Helan wasn't exaggerating about his powers after all. He is an android, number one. Androids are simple to dispose of. Fagor is no ordinary android, too. Perhaps he knows about the death of Thorden. Perhaps he has a facility for monitoring Thorden's brain rhythm activity. You are right to be concerned, number one. He has just passed through Corridor 21 by smashing straight through the bulkheads. And now he is moving along Corridor 8. It would appear that he is following the signs to the main control room. Shuttle to Challenger. Go ahead, Commander. How are the holograms we're sending you? Very good. The close-ups show that the damage was definitely caused by internal discharges of plasma weapons. Shana is lining up now. We should be entering the ship in two minutes. Out. We'll have a two-yard clearance all round, Telson. Forward three. Steady. Steady. Approach line loaded and locked. Lights. Lights on. Ah, oh, some mess, Shana. Forward five. Challenger to shuttle. Challenger to shuttle. Oh no. You know what's happened, Astra. Telson didn't release the transmitter relay when he entered the ship. Try the very low frequency channels. Yeah. Challenger to shuttle. Challenger to shuttle. Oh, that's just great. We've lost audio and visual contact. What the... No one moves. No, look. I said no one moves. Next time, they go kill. Where is the master? I am no longer monitoring his heartbeat. No, it's that android. I knew I'd seen him. You move. And you're dead. Where is the master? We don't know who you mean. <laughs> the blasts get nearer and nearer until you remember. Look, we don't know who you mean. Who is the master? Our commander is Telson, and he's inside that ship that you can see on the video screen. <laughs> There's no point in blasting about unless you tell us who you mean. Are you from that ship? Grand Emperor Thorden, ruler of the Solaric Empire. You have three seconds to tell me where he is. Well, Thornton is... Can you read a plan? Fago can read anything. Angel 2, display a plan of the active parts of the ship on the main screen. Plan on main screen as requested. Now look, we are here, you see? And the master is here. Three levels down. This chamber here. Recycling chamber? What is recycling chamber? The master is safe there. I promise. If you are lying, Fagor returns and kills. I am sorry, Dav. There was not time to warn you. He moves very quickly in straight lines. Yes, well, he'll move even quicker when he discovers Thornton's body. Uh, we're going to have to hide. And somehow we've got to get word to Telson and Shana that there's a piece of Thornton's nastiness on the loose and that it's capable of breaking out of the ship if his thrusters are intended for moving in space. Darv, I have a suggestion to make. There is the space ferry Thorden used to board the Challenger. It is in Stowage Bay 4. Oh, God. We'll have to turn back, Shana. We can't go any further into the ship. Why, what's the matter? I forgot to release the relay transmitter receiver. Oh. We've lost contact with the Challenger. We might as well press on and leave by another hole. We're yeah. certain to find one. Um, besides... Yes? Well, this probably sounds silly, but... Well, I'm, I'm enjoying being with you. I was thinking the same. That's odd. What? There's some gravity here, which means that some of the ship's systems are still working. Shana, set her down a minute. 
There's an intact freight airlock door straight ahead. Kelton, the rear view screen. There's a door sliding uh, shut. We're trapped. Uh, uh, maybe not. Ease her backwards. Mm. Oh, there. Oh. The door's opening. We're actually in an automatic airlock, Shana. Now, if you set the shuttle down in the center, we'll mm. see what happens. Ten minutes we've been waiting, Telson. Well, there's no point Look in Look at it. the ambient pressure indicators. Decimal eight! We've got ourselves an atmosphere outside. The question is, is it breathable? 20% oxygen, 80% nitrogen, temperature 22, gravity decimal seven. Home from home. Hmm. Well, it proves the systems are still working. But we can't go out without mobility suits. For all we know, the air could be leaking out as fast as it's being pumped in. All right, we'll wear the suits and keep the visors open until they're needed. Hello? 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 What? Don't do that. <laughs> I think you're wasting your breath, Telson. Look, come on. Yeah. There's a door over here. Let's try it. Uh. These suits aren't meant to be worn in gravity, Telson. Can we do without them? They're damn uncomfortable. We keep them on until we're absolutely sure of the atmospheric integrity of this place. Mm. Touch panel to open door. Not yet, Chana. Take your PD weapon out of its holster. We don't need PD Do as I say! Weapons. Now you can open the door. It could be deserted. The ship's one vast tomb. <laughs> We're just like you! No, we don't mean to frighten you, please! Look, I'll take my helmet off! Have we walked into each other? We better go back! Shana, there's no sign of that door! There must be a release somewhere! Have you done or we open fire in five seconds? Have done! Do as he says. Now, put your hands above your head. Fire! That's right. We may like that or we open fire. These are the two we've picked up in the marketplace, sir. They give their names as Telson and Shana. The female is Shana, sir. Thank you, Tran. No other names? No, sir. And they were wearing these one-piece garments and helmets, <laughs> obviously designed to cause panic. Now, look. You will not speak unless you're spoken Please, to. Tran. A protracted party last night at the chief executive's home. Sorry, sir. Uh, I think you had better sit down, uh, Telson and Shana. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, that's better. My name is Kroll. I have the customary four other names. I'd like to hear yours, please. We don't have other names. What from the Starship Challenger, which is lying alongside this ship? You will confine can... yourself to answering uh, questions. Jen. Sorry, sir. Your citizen's number, please. Hold out your wrist. No numbers, sir. Not checked. Ah. Now, that is interesting, Telson and Shana. If you will let me speak, we're from a starship, the sister ship to this one. <laughs> I'm very stupid, Telson. You must explain what is a starship. You mean... You mean you don't know? <laughs> but you must know. You're living on one. <laughs> on one what? A starship is, well, it's a ship that travels to the stars. Ah, yes, of course. And where are these stars? Perhaps you would like to tell me, Shana. The stars are in space. All of them? I don't think much of your sense of humour. I don't think much of under people terrorising the citizens of Holocaust City. What are under people? Or under people that insult my intelligence by telling me lies. These are their weapons, sir. They're similar to ours. We've tested them. The time is approaching when another war will be called for before they get too strong again. Can I ask you a question? Uh, by all means, Shana. Do you know what space is? <laughs> but of course, my child. As captain of Holocaust City, I am entitled to more space than any other citizen. With the exception of the chief executive, of course. So you don't know what is beyond Holocaust City? The underworld. Filled with creatures such as yourselves. <sighs> Look, if you would let us take you to our space shuttle, we could show you our ship and your ship. 
We could show you space and the stars. We can show you the entire heavens, billions upon billions of stars and galaxies shining out. The entire glory of the universe. It's no use, Telson. This concept of space you have, it's obviously very important to you. Well, of course space is important. It's where everything is. Including the underworld? Including Earth. Earth? Why, yes. Have you heard of it? Well, yes. Yes, we've heard of Earth. Is Earth important to you? We're searching for it. We were born in space on the Challenger, our starship. But the Earth is the home of our grandparents, our true home, if you like. And, and yours too, because you too must be descended from the people of the Earth. Oh, if you'd said right at the beginning that you were searching for Earth, it would have saved misunderstanding all round. Then we can go? We'll send you on your way in the morning. But first, you must dine with me, as my guests of honour. Afterwards, my servants will prepare a room for you. It's small. But I'm sure you will find it most comfortable. Telson. Hmm? It's dawn. It's starting to get light. I wonder how they do that. Oh, yes. Some form of diffuse lighting radiated from the inside of the dome. Mm. It's probably controlled by computers that they don't know even exist. Good morning, Shana. Telson. I hope the bed was comfortable. Um... We didn't get much sleep thinking about Earth. Among other things. We can't really believe that we're on our way to Earth at last. Well, that's understandable. Are we ready? Now? No point in keeping you any longer. And there's a large crowd gathering in the marketplace to say farewell to you. You made quite an impression yesterday. I think we'll walk. It's not far. Why all these people, Croft? That's it. Up the steps. I think there's some mistake, Crow. Our space shuttle is behind that wall over there. Dren is doing the honors for you. Look, how can you send us to Earth what from religion? Do you have religions in the underworld? Religion? The general prayers, I fancy, Dren. And the hoods, as there are children present. Ah, I despair of some parents. Kral, I, I don't understand. Oh, mighty power, guardian of the fusion reactors of our beautiful Holocaust city, giver of light and warmth, sentinel of the food farms, we ask you to accept the spirits of these creatures into your eternal kingdom of the planet Earth, where they will find life everlasting. Excellent. Now, if you would just stand on the traps, Shana, Chelson, and you'll be on your way. In Across the Abyss, part six of Earth Search by James Follett, Sean Arnold played Commander Telson, Amanda Murray Sharna, Hayden Wood Darv, and Catherine Hurlbut Astra. Angel One was played by Sonia Fraser, and Angel Two by Gordon Reed. Fago was Sean Probert, Kroll, Michael Spice, and Dren, John Webb. Earth Search is directed by Glyn Dearman.